So in my last video, I took and I uh, virtualized TrueNAS in a Proxmox container. The only problem I have with that is my R610 only accepts two and a half inch hard drives. And I've got 12, three and a half inch hard drives that I want to use. And besides that, I've already filled up all the bays, all the hot swappable bays on the front of the machine. So how am I going to resolve this problem? Well, I'm gonna build a JBOD. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do this next on Low Res DIY. So first of all, JBOD. What the hell is a JBOD? Well, it stands for just a bunch of disks or just a box of disks. So you can go on to Amazon or eBay or something like that, find a, a pre-built uh, system, uh, not necessarily like Synology or anything like that. It's just a box that you slide in your hard drives to and you use a USB connection for it. Limited bandwidth, etc., etc. That's why I want to go with a JBOD. I don't want to slow up i want to go as fast as i can with this stuff even though i'm using pretty old old hardware uh one thing though before we get into the jbot i i feel i would be remiss if i didn't say something to you know the folks that are using in that not using a server but you're using a desktop as your server or you've got a desktop type server you can get something like this guy here it's just a little uh little card that you slide into a one by PCIe slot and it gives you four, let's see if you'll focus, there we go, four SATA connections and uh, provided you have space for hard drives in your machine, this will be all right. Don't expect it to do anything uh, massive as far as speed or anything like that goes. But my in my situation, I'm dealing with the server and I need to go a different route. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to take this card right here. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's an HP something or other. I'll, I'll go ahead and put the link in the description for you. And what it does is it takes a uh, SFF8088 cable. I guess I could have got this out before I started all this. Uh, and I got these cables on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description if you're wanting to do something like this. I'm not affiliated or anything like that, but uh, might as well just make life as easy as possible. So what happens is this connection right here, it just slides into the card just like that, makes that connection. And then on the other end of it, it has four SATA connections to connect up to a uh, to four hard drives. So this will go into the server and this will go to our JBOD. Now, the, one of the problems we're gonna have with the JBOD is, well, for one, what kind of box are we gonna use? Now I'm not gonna pull it up yet, but I've got the old server box. I think I showed it in a video a little while back, an old Roswell that I'm going to use. I'm gonna put all the disks in it I'm going to use the power supply that's in it, and I am going to uh, connect up all the fans to that power supply. The problem we're gonna have is with these ATX power supplies, you can per turn the switch on in the back and uh, it won't power the power supply on because it's not connected to a motherboard or anything like that. Now you can go out and you can buy uh, little uh, uh, PCBs, That'll make this connection for you. If I remember, I'll throw a link up to a few of them or a couple pictures up to, to what you can use. You can do that and have an on-off switch. Well, actually, this guy here, I'm, you can see right there, he's got a little on-off switch on him. This is used for uh, turning an ATX uh, power supply into a benchtop power supply where you've got you know, your 12, your five, and your three volt breakouts there to use however you want but it comes with a little on off switch but let's say you're not using a case or anything like that you can get something like this guy right here let's see if we can focus it's just a, a connector that hooks up to the atx uh, 24 pin uh, power supply and has a little wire jumper here that jumps two wires 
on the machine or on the power supply that will turn it on and it'll be powered all the time. You'll just use the little switch in the back to turn it off and on. And even if you don't want to get something like this, you can just take a piece of wire and jump the two pins that are needed to be jumped. I'm not going to tell you which two pins they are because I'm pretty sure they're all the same pins on all the power supplies. But with my luck, somebody will go ahead and do it and they'll have some weird power supply and it'll burn their house down and they'll be coming screaming, low res, you're a freaking idiot and uh, we don't need that hassle so let's uh, go ahead and get the server up here on the table and have a look at what we're dealing with all right so here's my current free nas server soon to be my jbod what i already have is uh i have eight three terabyte hard drives in here a couple noctua fans right here a couple noctua fans back here a ryzen 5 24g uh, processor 32 gig of ram a sas expander by eight uh, a 10 10 gig nick card a one gig nick card and a little cheapy uh ssd that ran free nice nas for me my plan is i am going to pull the processor the ram all the cards the hard drive pull everything out leave just the uh, motherboard in there that way i can use the motherboard uh, in conjunction with the uh, power button in the front to turn the system on or off if i want to if i ever need to for some reason and it will also control the uh, pwm fans for me and regulate how fast they're going to run how loud they can be and a bonus to actually just using an old uh motherboard like this let's say i run out of room with the uh the card i'm putting in the server and i need to add another uh sas expander card in here well this motherboard will power that card and then you can hook it directly up to the card in the server so with that i'm going to pull all this stuff out of here and we'll uh get started with uh putting the connecting it to the server Well, that was my plan, but what I ended up finding out was that motherboard needs at least one stick of RAM and a CPU installed in it before it'll power up. A matter of fact, all of the old motherboards that I have require that. So I don't know if it's just you need a old, old, old motherboard or if it's just an Intel motherboard because everything I have is AMD or a server motherboard. I don't know not going to do the research on it because I'm, I'm not going to buy one. I'm not going to spend, you know, $50, $100 just for something to control some PWM fans and maybe run a PCIe card or something like that. What I am going to do, though, is uh, I'm going to take this guy right here and I am going to desolder. Boy, he doesn't want to focus. Desolder that on off button and I'm going to solder a couple of pins onto it in, in its place actually i'm gonna take the power button from the front of the case and i'm gonna hook it up to those two pins and i'm gonna use that power button to control the uh on off of the the uh jbot at least that's what i planned on doing but what i found out was that this board actually requires a on off button that actually like stays you click it and it stays in and it stays on unlike the motherboard the button that's installed in this machine right now is basically just a toggle you click it it sends a signal and then it just comes back out the way it was so what i'm going to do or what i ended up doing I'll go ahead and pop this guy back on was I soldered those two pins on and I just installed a jumper onto it because, you know, I thought about it. Hey dude, you built this machine like three years ago. You turned it on and you never turned it off. So the chances of me actually turning it off are probably uh, because it needs repairs or something like that. And if it comes to that point, I thought, you know, self, maybe you could just get your fat ass behind the uh, server case and flip the switch. It shouldn't be that hard. So that's what I am going to do. I'm going to, uh, I printed out a little 3d mount for it here and I'm going to mount the PCB to it, double side tape it to the inside of the case. And we're just going to turn it off and on and off with the power button on the back of the, uh, of the case. The other reason I wanted to leave the, uh, well, there's two other reasons I wanted to leave the motherboard in there. One was because I wanted to control the PWM fans. And to get around that, I uh, bought these two little PCBs. Um, they're 
10 bucks for the pair of them. I thought, uh, let's give it a try. And what I'm going to do is hook 12 volt up to that there to the one of the posts on the on off circuit board that we're going to install. And it will give power to the uh, this circuit board. And it comes with this little antenna looking thing. And what that is, is it's a temperature sensor that plugs in right there and it tells the board what the temperature is inside the case. And I believe with these two dials right here, you can use that to adjust how fast the fans run given the temperature. And those guys hook up right there. So never used one before, figured hell $10, we're gonna give it a try. And uh, the other reason was because I wanted to, uh, just in case I needed to install another SAS expander card in the JBOD, uh, I would, could have power. So what I did was I bought a pair of these for like $15 and what they are is cryptocurrency miners use them to hook their GPUs up to this. They run it with a six pin uh, power supply from your power supply and then they run a USB cable into the, the mining machine and it controls the GPU. Well, I can use that to control a SAS expander card and it'll be actually pulling a hell of a lot less wattage than a, a GPU will. So with that, I'm going to go ahead, put all this stuff back together. Uh, oh, I'm also, for the time being, going to switch out to just a couple of these fans because they run off Molex. They're just a couple cheapies, so I'm going to pull the fan tray out also, leave it off to the side for the time being. And with that, I am going to go ahead and put everything in the server in three, two, and here we go. This is the finished product. Sorry about the uh, bright reflection there. I, I tried to get rid of it, but uh, I can't seem to do that. But here's what we got. We've got our little power circuit board uh, mounted to the case right by the I.O. cage. We've got all our wires ran to the four bays of hard drives. These are the wires that are going to go to the server. I've labeled each bay with a number, which corresponds with uh, the number I put on the back of the uh, plug so that I know which cable goes to which hard drive bay. And uh, the only thing left now is to go ahead and power it up and see what we get. Oh, these fans will not spin once we power it up, if it powers up, because they're PWM fans and I don't have them hooked up yet. So here we go, three, two, one. And red light comes on, I'm seeing the LED for, or the the LEDs for the hard drives on this bay right here. I can hear that bad hard drive clicking away. So everything's good to go. I'm going to turn this guy off, put him back into the server tray. Then we're going to throw that card into the R610 and uh, jump in the Proxmox and set everything up. All right, the card's installed. Everything is powered up and running. So the only thing left now is, you see we're already logged into Proxmox. Let's go ahead and roll down to our disks. Click on that and see how many disks show up. Should be 18 and there's quite a few there. So I am gonna say that everything's working properly. And yep, right here you can see the three terabyte uh, disks that we put in there so and a couple of one terabytes I put in there so yeah we're good to go everything is up and running properly next thing I'm gonna do is pass these through to Proxmox set up the uh, uh, or I'm gonna import the dev or the pool that I have already created create a couple more pools and uh, just play around with it and see what the speeds are like. If you don't know how to pass through the hard drives to uh, your true NAS VM yet, check this video out here. Uh, it's the last one I put up. It, it, it's about midway through the video or so. I show you how to do that. And uh, yeah, it wasn't a hundred percent success. It didn't, everything didn't go off the way I wanted to, but hey, plan B kicked in. We still got it done. I am uh, super happy with what we have going on right now. And honestly, with that uh, motherboard out of there, if I really wanted to, I could use the old 3D printer, print up a little tray to put more hard drives in there. So uh, if you're interested in seeing what that circuit board's like when I finally get it in sometime in the next week or two, uh, leave a comment down in, in the comments there. 
and uh, maybe we'll do a little video about that or maybe we'll do a little video about uh, setting up a uh, ZFS RAID Z1, Z2, whatever. Got any ideas? Uh, just throw them in the comments. Let me know. And uh, until then, go ahead and uh, karate chop that like button and roundhouse kick the subscribe button and catch you later.